On my diagram videos, I beginning comments that I didn't put in the numbers off the relays. And to be honest with you guys, I forgot that there was numbers on them. I just have been using relays for so long that I know what they are. So I thought I'd show you how to determine a relay if you don't know how the diagram works or any of that. This here represents the coil. The reason why I call that a coil, look at it, it's a coil. And what happens with that coil when we energize it One of these is positive, one of these is negative, and watch right in there and see that move. So it moves that switch, and they're not polarized. I can move that lead there. Still works. Just wants voltage to go through it. So you can kind of see that's what the inside of a relay looks like. So, here's what I do. We got the meter here, our ohm setting, and you can go around and find one that has some resistance, 88.7 ohms. We're measuring across that of the one they have in here. This one's a little different, so it's going to measure uh, 93. So you can go around and you can see that this connector here it's not connected to anything else but this one. And if I do this one, it's the same way. See, nothing happened with the meter. Okay, so we've eliminated those two. These are the two we know we need to apply power when we want this to change state. And what I mean about changing state is that if we do this, these two are closed right now. And this one and this one's open. So if you've got a relay and they're not in this configuration, you just check all of them. See, that's open, that's open. So you can kind of figure out which your common is. So if we apply power to this one, there's the click, this is our common, and now this one's closed. Okay, and then this one's open. For one of my projects, I made up this little thing because the ones I was, was buying um, were very cheap. They, they lasted a month or two and would fail, and they were way more complicated than what I needed. I just needed a regular 12-volt relay that did some switching. So let's say we had something like this. I mean, there's a diagram on it showing the coil, and then your common... And your switches here. If you go across these, you know, I'm just kind of guessing right now that these two look like they would be the coil, and they are. See, I've got ohms across there. And then, according to the diagram, this one here should be the common. So you can see that's open. And that one's closed. And when we change this state, then these two would be closed. And if you want to make sure, just do like we did with the other one. So if you're looking at some of my wiring diagrams, I lay them out like this pretty much all the same. And this is the uh, reversing polarity one. So you can see what's happening. As we showed, okay, those are our closed ones, all right? So this common is going to this right now, which is green's representing negative. So this is actually sending negative through here, okay? Not red, I'm just saying red is the wire off of this particular motor. And then if we watch here, this common is tied to this center one also because they're both in the same state de-energized going to the negative. 
But once we energize one, so let's say we energize this one. Now this will be closed. This is open, so we don't have negative going here anymore. We would have positive going here. Okay, hope this is making sense. And if we look at these terminals here, 30, this one's upside down, this one would represent 30. Okay, then we have this on here, this is 87A. Okay, it's showing 87A is the one that's closed. Okay, so this middle one here is 87A, and the other one is um, just 87. So this one here is 87. Then your coils are 86 and 85. This one's laid out the same way, just like that. Okay, so I hope in the future I'll make sure I number those. But you should be able to figure out how to wire up a relay from this video. All right, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the future with uh, some more stuff, I hope. Thanks.